Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. I'm going to read to you today a book. I'll teach my dog 100 words. You ready? <laughs> Now all I gotta do is find the first page. Okay, I'll teach my dog 100 words. Can you see the page? I'll teach him walk and run and then catch a ball. Now that makes 10. Wait a minute, I messed up here somewhere. <laughs> The first six words I'll teach my pup are dig a hole and fill it up. I'll teach him walk and run and then catch a ball. Now that makes ten. And Mr. Smith, who lives next door, will say, that's great. Can you teach him more? And then I'll teach him bark and beg and wag your tail and then shake a leg and wash your ears and wash your toes and scratch your head and blow your nose then mr smith will tell miss brown this is the smartest dog in town i won't stop there no not at all i'll teach him big i'll teach him small and fat and thin and short and tall and dark and light and day and night can you see this and then miss brown will call miss may come over right away she'll say this dog is learning chase the cat and climb the tree and things like that then we will give them more to see. Eat your food and follow me. Wow, we're up to 43. I'll teach him red and blue and green, the smartest dog we've ever seen. I'll teach him orange, purple, pink. That makes 49, I think. And then Miss May will call Mayor Mir. She'll call Please, hurry over here. And then for Mr. Mir, the mayor, I'll teach my dog, now paint the chair, paint the road from here to there, paint Uncle Abner's underwear, but have a care, don't paint the mayor. Then Mr. Mir, the mayor, will say, I'll make today a holiday, and everyone will come to see my amazing dog and me. We'll show them skate and kick the stone, jump the fishbowl, bring the bone, chew the boot, and hold the phone. Okay. Cut the grass, shine my shoes, comb your hair, and clean the zoo. Now brush the bear, that's 82. But that's not all my dog will do. He'll tickle the pig and kiss the goose. He'll feed the mouse and mop the moose. He'll toot the bugle beat her drum, he'll stand on Uncle Abner's thumb. And then I'll teach him sing with the birds. Now there, that makes 100 words. My dog will learn those 100 words and how my friends will cheer. I'll teach my dog those 100 words. I think I'll start next year. End of the book. One. Stop. You got to remember, you got to eat all your vegetables because if you don't, you're going to have teeth like this. So don't forget. I'll take them out.
Now, I eat all my vegetables and look at how good my teeth are. <laughs> We're going to read the book all about corduroy. There's the cover. And we're going to turn to page one and say, Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overall. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's that very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost a button to one of his shoulder straps. Corey watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening when the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stopped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was the most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy guessed. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto the large, thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and round. Why, there's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. I hope I'm not putting people to sleep. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button. And off the mattress, corduroy toppled. Bang into the tall lamp, over fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light and un under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customer came into the store in the morning, and there looking at him with a wide, warm smile was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up from four flights of stairs 
into her family's apartment and straight to her own bedroom. Corduroy blinked, there was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know, I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. And I think that's the end of the story here. Yeah? Okay, this is the second story about Corduroy, and it's called A Pocket for Corduroy. Late one summer afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundromat. As always on such trips, Lisa carried along her toy bear corduroy. The laundromat was very busy place at this hour. Now corduroy, you sit right here and wait for me, Lisa said. I'm going to help with our wash. Corduroy waited patiently. Then he suddenly perked up his ears. Lisa's mother was saying, Be sure to take everything out of your pockets, Lisa dear. You don't want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. Pockets, said Corduroy to himself. I don't have a pocket. He slid off the chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of he said, and he began to look around. First he came to a pile of fancy towels and washcloths, but nothing was right, nothing was the right size or color. Then he saw a huge stack of colorful clothes in a laundry bag. There ought to be something in there to make a pocket out of, he said. Without hesitating, he climbed inside the bag, which was filled with pieces of wet laundry. The dampness didn't bother Corduroy at the least. This must be a cave, he said, sighing happily. I've always wanted to live in a dark, cool cave. When the time came for Lisa to fetch her bear, he was gone. Oh, mommy, she exclaimed, Corduroy's in here where I left him. I'm sorry, honey, said her mother, but that laundromat will be closing soon and we must be getting home. Lisa was reluctant to leave without corduroy, but her mother insisted, you can come back tomorrow, she said. I'm sure he will still be here. As they left, a young man wearing an artist's beret was taking his wet laundry out of the bag, the very bag Corduroy had discovered. Before he knew it, Corduroy was being tossed together with all of the sheets, shirts, shorts, and slacks inside the dryer. But just as the artist was shutting the glass door, Corduroy tumbled out onto the floor. How in thunder did that bear get mixed up with all my things, the artist wondered. Poor Corduroy was damp all over. But at least I can do for him is give him oh his give his overalls a good drying, said the man thoughtfully. He unbuttoned Corduroy's shoulder straps and put his overalls in the dryer. Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning around, but the artist became inspired. This would make a wonderful painting, he said, 
as he took a sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling colors. I can hardly wait to get back to my studio. Finally, the dryer stopped whirling and the man gathered up the clothes. Then he helped Corduroy put on his warm, dry overalls. All at once, the manager of the laundromat called, Closing time! Everybody out! Corduroy was, was gently placed on top of a washing machine. I wonder who that bear belongs to, said the artist as he was leaving. Seems to me he should have his name someplace. He's too fine a fellow to be lost. As soon as the lights were turned off, uh, Corduroy began, began his search again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. Maybe it's snow, he said excitedly. I've always wanted to play in the snow. He accidentally tipped over the open lidded box and suddenly he, got, he was covered with soft, slippery soap flakes. Gradually, Corduroy began to slip and slide. Oh, what fun, he said with a smile. I've always wanted to ski down a steep mountainside. He landed, paws first, in an empty laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking through the bars. I've never wanted to live inside a cage like a bear in the zoo. But by now, Corduroy felt drowsy, and soon he nodded off to sleep. Next morning, when the manager came to open the door of the laundromat, there was Lisa waiting. I left something here yesterday, she explained. May I look around? Certainly, said the manager. My customers are always leaving things. Lisa was searching under the chairs and in the back of the washing machine when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you're looking for, senorita? Yes, yes, he's my best friend, shouted Lisa as she came running. She reached in and picked Corderay out of the blanket, basket, I'm sorry. So this is where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time I took you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran out the door and down the street, holding Corderay tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket, asked Lisa, giving him an affectionate squeeze. That very morning, Lisa sewed a pocket on Corduroy's overalls, and here is a card I made with your name on it for you to keep tucked inside, she said. I've always wanted a purple pocket with my name tucked inside, said Corduroy, as he and Lisa nuzzled noses. Now this is three books that I had to read, and I get paid for only reading two, so you'll have to send me the money for the third reading. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Leave them in. Oh, jeez. Uh, That's up. Uh, you got, you got no, it? not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. I got to really zoom in. You got to scare the cat. <laughs> go away. Yeah, go that, away. That's not safe, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay, hold on. Not yet. Let me stop I'm it. I'm going to. I see it's recording. Oh, it's recording.